Okay, so what I'm actually going to do this morning um, is a little bit of a walkthrough and a live demo um, of a little known module within Microsoft 365. Um, we're actually Microsoft partners, um, so we do actually know the Microsoft products product set reasonably inside out, although they do keep keep on surprising us every so often. Um, but uh, one of the things with Microsoft 365 is that there's an awful lot of functionality there. Um, and the majority of people who actually subscribe to uh, Microsoft 365 use Word, Excel and maybe PowerPoint um, and then don't really get much further than that. Um, what can be even worse is that you actually often you people end up paying twice for the same sort of functionality. Um, so what I'm actually going to look at today is a module called bookings. So um, this can actually be found. Uh, sorry, this is this is the standard Microsoft 365 um, client page. And if you click on the, the top left there, you'll find a module called bookings um, in true um, Blue Peter style. Here's one I prepared earlier, um, and th this is where it will actually take you. Um, and this is um, this this is uh, my setup at the moment. <coughs> um, effectively, what I'm actually using this for is doing my one to one bookings. And i say for those of you who will who um, uh, We'll save the chat after the meeting, you'll actually notice a link to uh, my bookings page in there. So if I actually um, da, 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 shuffle that around a bit because Zoom's getting in the way. Um, so this is actually what my one to one booking page looks like. Um, so uh, I do online one to ones for the uh, um, the online meetings that I'm involved in, such as this and uh, I also do face to face and people can select either of those. Um, and down here, I mean, actually, yeah, I'm the only one there, but um, you can actually see my live availability. So if I actually click on a date. Um, yeah, let's pick a Tuesday because there's a there's a booking in there. So this is actually updating based on the the calendar that I actually have in Microsoft 365 um, concerning my availability. Um, and then you can actually collect optional details down the bottom there. Um, so kind of up to this point, it's a little bit like Calendly or um, um, uh, you can book me and uh, and services like that. Um, however, the key thing is that it is completely integrated into Microsoft 365. So if I click on that there, this will actually take me to the um, configuration page. So the uh, the system itself is based around booking pages, which is what you've just seen there. Um, and you can actually customize these with um, with logos and the like. Um, if you operate across different time zones, for example, you can control the time zone time zones that booking pages work for. Um, you can change um, scheduling policies around um, for particular days and times. Um, it also has the concept of star. So, I mean, again, I've kind of only got myself in here at the moment. Um, but let's just say that um, I was um, an independent fi financial advisor, for example, um, and I want to offer a series of services such as um, pension reviews, um, uh, mortgage advice, et cetera, et cetera, all the kinds of things that um, an IFA might normally offer. Um, I also might have on my staff certain people who specialize in certain areas of that. So what I can actually do is to create a series of services. Um, so what I will actually do now is to add a new service here. So I might say create a service called mortgage advice. Um, 
and then I can actually work my way through there. And I can then apply that service to particular staff. So if I've got someone who is a mortgage specialist, um, I would add them in there. If I've perhaps got a couple of mortgage specialists, um, I can add them in there. Um, and then I can allow people to say anyone and it will find me find it will find me an appropriate resource for the service that I've selected. Um, the um, the applications of that are kind of um, very, very, um, very, very wide. Um, one of the ones that I've actually done in the past was booking booking for a hair salon where particular particular people in the salon have particular um, particular skills. Um, so depending on what you actually wanted doing to your hair, um, determined who you got. Um, and then it also looked at that those people's, avail people's availability. Um, you can also, as I use it, if you prefer to, um, to deal with one person, you can just select that person. So, um, the great thing, the great thing with Microsoft Bookings, of course, is that it integrates with the rest of the Microsoft suite. Um, and one something I'll actually talk about in a future session is a um, a lovely little product called a lovely little module called um, Power Automate. Um, <clears throat> now, some of you might might have seen stuff like Zapier before. Um, which is uh, another automation platform, but Power Automate is something that sits within here. So let's just say um, I want to do, um, I want to actually start charging for some of the services, um, as in, as indeed I might do. You know, if I was a, uh, um, if I were a hair salon, I might want to take a deposit or or take payment up front for that service. Um, I can actually use Power Automate to actually do that um, in conjunction with a pay, uh, payment processor like Stripe. So I can allow people to book their time um, and then use Power Automate to get a get a card payment from them. Um, so just one of the uh, the lovely things that you can do with this, and and the uh, as I say the uh, the possibilities are really kind of endless. You know, anything that revolves around booking time um, um, and staff availability, you can actually you can actually build in to um, to Microsoft Bookings. So, at a very very high level, that's Microsoft Bookings. Um, if there are any questions, happy to happy to take them. I have a question. Um... Is it possible to integrate the bookings uh, into a WordPress website? Uh, yes, it is. Um, what you've actually what you've actually got here. If I actually go back to um, sorry, if I if I actually go back to here, when I uh, when I get there, your call is important to us. Okay, so if I if I look at this here, um, what I can actually do if I click on that there, so I've got a URL for a booking page there, which will open it in a open it in a browser. But you've also got this embed functionality, so um, you 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 will understand only too well what that what that is, Keith. But yeah, yeah. I mean, effectively, the, that will allows you to embed it into a um, a page either using a link or an iframe. Mm. Okay, cool. Because I, I had a client yesterday who's a potential client. They want to run a, a website with a booking functionality and ask them what they use. And they said Microsoft Booking. And at that point, I'd never heard of it. So this is coming at a very good time. <laughs> and and Lisa, does does them does this allow for like round robin? So I know you you mentioned you can add staff. Yes. Into that calendar. Does that link yes. their uh, calendar you, into the same? It does. It it does. And then you and then you can either use round robin um or um the one who's got the most free time or you know um variations on that theme to allocate. 
And and and, we, and and does it take the payments out of there as well? Does that integrate um, yes. the calendar? Well, it in, it integrates using using Power Automate. Um, so, um, I mean, you've, you've got a number of possibilities there, as I say, I, I've actually done it using, um, using Stripe as a payment processor before. Um, but it's also one of the, one of the other ones I've done that was, um, a little bit more involved, um, was actually getting, um, getting it to create an invoice in zero and send the invoice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you, Lake. Um, was was that? Did I see your hand, Hamera? Next. Yeah, but you just answered the question. Uh, asked the question about Stripe and uh, um, the automated one. Whether yeah. So that's really interesting. That is because um, I didn't know um, Microsoft three six five had that feature. So this is really. Um... Yeah, honestly, honestly, not many people, not many people do, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know why, but, you know, Microsoft seem to seem to not shout about this sort of thing very, very much. But, um, you know, it's included in all of the Microsoft 365 business subscriptions and, and you know, many people don't use it um, and lots of people end up paying twice for um you know, and using something like Calendly on a paid subscription as well. Yeah, that was me um, until last year when I, somebody with in UW does a lot of the IT stuff with us. And he said, hey, are you paying all this money twice? <laughs> mm. Absolutely blown my mind how much he saved me. So yes, I mean, see Lee because he'll sort you out. Honestly, you'll you'll save such a lot of money. He'll go through all what you've got and sort you out. Yeah, so I mean, I I forget how much Calendly subscriptions are now. About ten pounds a month, aren't they, for the the medium plan? But it was a little bit more. Well, okay. I'm not sure. I've you know I've I've not looked for a long, long time, but you know that's uh, you know that's still a hunt that you know it'd still be 120 pounds a year in in your pocket rather than theirs. Yeah, and it's the same with Zoom. I mean, I pay out what's 140 pounds a year to Zoom, whereas Oof, I yeah, use, yeah, using Teams, but I've never really used it, so I'm not. You know, you're running. Okay, well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's my next insight then. Microsoft yeah. Teams, because, um, yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I, I was doing the same until early, early last year. I was using using Zoom an awful lot, um, and uh, um, and paying. Well, I'm paying, I'm paying for the privilege, yeah. um, and then you think, well, actually, why am I, why am I doing this? I'm already, you know, I'm already paying for Teams. Um, it works. It works well a lot of the time. So yeah, I now just have Zoom on the the free subscription and really only use it if someone else if someone else wants to and for and for meetings like this. Yeah, yeah. But but yes, I'm not comfortable with it, so I don't use it because I'm not comfortable with it. So yeah, that would be <laughs> great to, to do an insight yeah. on that. Lee. 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 Yeah. Hi, mate. Um, Regarding Teams, um, it definitely do an insight on it. But, I mean, I mainly use Zoom myself, but um, all the training com we, we do with finance companies, they always we always do the training on Teams. Is there a reason why yeah. Teams as opposed to Zoom? <clears throat> it's a little bit more secure. Oh, is that why? Um, I mean that um, that 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 kind of cuts both ways. Um, a little bit, but um, yeah, you'll find you know you'll find that financial organisations will prefer Teams. Um, up until fairly recently, it also made Teams did make it quite difficult to run public public facing webinars, and Zoom was was a better tool for that. Um, but um, a couple of releases ago, Microsoft have actually sorted that now, and you can you can do public webinars in Teams easily enough.